Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. The ripple of things to come became evident when a newspaper called The Australian reported students were making impressive gains in reading. That's been credited to a program called Sound Training. Think of it as Latin light. Students were introduced to Latin roots, prefixes, and suffixes. You know, I fondly remember taking Latin in Dr. Marcelino's class in high school. Okay, Mr. Eastman, it's your turn. Amo, uh, I love. Amas, you love. Amat, he or she loves. Amamas, we love. Amatas, you plural love. Amat, they love. Hey, who threw that spitball? Enough daydreaming. (laughs) Let's return to now. Somebody got the idea to introduce the sound training program into British prisons in six-week sessions. According to the think tank, LKMCO, the average gain in reading age was 18 months. That's astounding. We wanted to talk to an expert on Latin to get an informed perspective. Sherwin Little is executive director of the American Classical League. Sherwin, why do you suppose the prisoners responded so well to their limited exposure to Latin? Well, I think it talks about who we are. You know, English is one of those languages that kind of amalgamates a lot of different elements, and a big chunk of what makes English English are the Latin and Greek roots, and by looking at the bits and pieces that form the English words using the Latin roots, it uncovers a whole different perspective on the English language. Of course, the other major part of English comes from Anglo-Saxon. The small, everyday German-based words have different rules of pronunciation, accent patterns, and spellings than we use with Latin, right? Oh, absolutely. It's part of the key to understanding what seem like really long and complex words and sentence structures. But if you know the bits and pieces, then you've got the code that lets you unlock all of that. Now let's move from prisoners and what I call Latin light to high school students and Latin reading and grammar. What are people missing if they haven't been exposed to classical material? The most important thing about studying Latin Greek in the ancient world is access to the interesting thoughts, ideas, and concepts that the people in the ancient world discussed, considered, and how they touch upon what we are today and how we became Americans and Western society. It was a really interesting thought and the beautiful poetry and the beautiful language and things are classics, small c, for a reason, that they speak to people across time, they have something to say. If they weren't, they wouldn't have endured. Back in high school, I really appreciated the opportunity to read Caesar's commentaries on the Gallic War and the orations of Cicero. It's almost like I found a newspaper from that time, and there you go. It put me right back there, and I really like that. Oh, we can't make some of that stuff up. You know, you read the infighting, the politics, and all of that, and it sounds very contemporary. When I was doing some research for the program that we're recording now, I came across something on the Internet that made some sense to me, and I wanted to bounce it off you. Someone said the reason interest in Latin declined in the early 1900s was because teachers were pushing the classical rather than the Italian pronunciation. You know, that's where the C's and G's are always hard, like K and G, and never soft, like S and J. Any thoughts on that? Well, I don't know if that's a reason for why things change in popularity. I can talk about the fact that around the 1960s or so, the whole idea that education was they should be butterflies and let them learn what they will, and then people discovered that they really didn't learn what was expected of them. Do you see a new renaissance? for Latin? Absolutely. I think a big part of what's happening right now is that in uh, K-12 education especially, there are a lot of teachers that are saying, we need to teach millennials differently than we taught 30 years ago when I started teaching. They were very different than they are today. Kids today really want to be able to be creators. They want to use their language and what they've learned to do something with it. And 
and a lot of teachers are trying hard to incorporate kind of active Latin, where there are writing and, and speaking and reading, all kinds of different things that can make it interesting. Sherwin, thanks for sharing your expertise with us today. My pleasure. Sherwin Little is Executive Director of the American Classical League. You can learn more by visiting his website, aclclassics.org. I guess we can sum things up with this quote from Julius Caesar, Veni, Vidi, Fici. I came, I saw, I conquered. And as we've learned, Latin is conquering illiteracy in 21st century prisons and elsewhere. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. Thank you.